Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is Professor Abdul Salam Yasin Taha from the College of Medicine, University of Sulaimani, giving a talk on mediastinoscopy. This lecture is published on YouTube, and you can use the URL at the bottom of the slide to watch the lecture and other lectures. In this lecture, involvement of mediastinal lymph nodes has a dramatic prognostic and therapeutic impact in patients with non-small cell lung cancer. Cervical mediastinoscopy remains the most important technique for staging of non-small cell lung cancer. Beside conventional cervical mediastinoscopy, extended mediastinoscopy and redo mediastinoscopy are described in this lecture. Other types of the procedure, such as anterior mediastinoscopy and medical mediastinoscopy are also described. The indications, technique, and complications are also discussed. Mediastinoscopy is a thoracic surgical procedure in which the mediastinum is assessed using a rigid endoscope called the mediastinoscope. The logo on these slides of this lecture is the uh, rigid uh, conventional mediastinoscope. Surgery of the mediastinum was first described in 1899 when a superior mediastinal abscess was successfully drained. Eric Carlins of Sweden introduced the mediastinoscope in 1959. The idea of using a video camera <clears throat> in mediastinoscopy by Lirot in 1989 and the introduction of video assisted mediastinoscopy, VAM, in the clinical practice by Sortini modified the operative technique of mediastinoscopy, allowing a better visualization of the mediastinum and the bimanual handling during the procedure. Video-assisted mediastinoscopy enabled a more extended visualization, sampling, and removal of pathological mediastinal lymph nodes. Mediastinoscopy in Iraq. In Iraq, mediastinoscopy was performed for the first time in the 1970s. Unfortunately, the patient died after uncontrollable hemorrhage. Hence, the procedure was abandoned for the following decades. A few years ago, a new device was bought and many cases were performed in the same center in Baghdad. According to a personal communication with one of the involved surgeons, the initial results are being reported. Anatomy. The mediastinum is the region in the central chest between the two pleural cavities extending from the thoracic inlet to the diaphragm. It contains several important organs, vessels, and nerves, including the heart, the great vessels, the trachea, esophagus, phrenic and vagus nerves, thymus, and lymph nodes. Borders of mediastinum. The mediastinum has five borders, superior, inferior, posterior, anterior, and lateral. The lateral borders comprise the left and right pleural sacs, the posterior, border is the vertebral column in the form of 12 thoracic vertebrae, and the anterior border is the sternum. The superior and inferior borders are the thoracic inlet and diaphragm, respectively. Compartments of the mediastinum. The mediastinum is divided into the superior and inferior mediastinum. This division occurs at the level of the sternal angle 
which is located at the level of the risk space between T4 and T5 vertebrae. The inferior mediastinum is anatomically subdivided into the anterior, middle, and posterior mediastinum. The middle mediastinum contains the pericardium and the heart. Although it contains the most vital organs of the body, the mediastinum is often a forgotten compartment. So in this uh, slide, we can see uh, two uh, models of uh, dividing the mediastinum. In the, uh, on the left side, the mediastinum is divided into three compartments, the anterosuperior in the front of the heart, the middle uh, compartment containing the heart and pericardium, and the posterior compartment in the form of the posterior uh, or the paravertebral sulci. Uh, in the right side picture, the mediastinum is divided into the superior and inferior compartments, and the inferior compartment is further subdivided into the anterior, middle, and posterior divisions. Now, one of the important contents of the mediastinum is the mediastinal lymph nodes. Understanding the anatomy of the mediastinal lymph nodes is very important. These lymph nodes are divided into 14 stations, starting from number one, which is the highest uh, mediastinum, number two, the upper paratracheal right and left, number three is the prevascular uh, and retrotracheal, number four uh, uh, is the lower paratracheal, number five is the subaortic, number six is the paraortic, Number seven is the subcarinal. Number eight is the paraesophageal. Number nine is the inferior pulmonary ligament lymph nodes. Number 10 and 11, uh, the hyalur lymph nodes. And uh, number 12 to 14 are the peripheral lymph nodes in the lung. Now, the mediastinal lymph nodes uh, uh, are divided into the upper. Uh, lymph nodes from one to uh, four, and the lower seven, eight, and nine. So station one, the highest mediastinal nodes are not routinely accessed by cervical mediastinoscopy. The accessible lymph nodes by cervical mediastinoscopy are the two R, uh, the right upper paratracheal, two L, the left upper paratracheal, the 4R, the right lower paratracheal, the 4L, the left lower paratracheal, and number seven, the subcarinal lymph nodes. <clears throat> the division between the upper and lower paratracheal lymph nodes is a line drawn tangential at the upper margin of the aortic arch. It divides the upper from the lower paratracheal uh, lymph nodes. Station three, or the prevascular and retrotracheal nodes, are also not accessible by the conventional cervical mediastinoscope. The subcarinal uh, lymph nodes, number seven, are divided into anterior 7A and posterior 7P. The posterior subcarinal nodes, stations at 7P, as well as the uh, paraesophageal nodes number eight, and the inferior pulmonary ligament node station nine, are not accessible by conventional uh, mediastinoscopy because they are out of the reach of the mediastinoscope. The subaortic node station five and the paraortic node station six cannot be biopsied through the standard uh, cervical mediastinoscopy. The indications for the procedure, biopsy of lymph nodes or masses in the middle mediastinum of unknown origin, such as in sarco sarcoidosis and lymphoma, 
The histamine staging in patients with non-small cell lung cancer, which is the main indication, diagnosis, and removal of some mediastinal masses, such as a thymoma and benign mediastinal cyst. Contraindications, absolute contraindications for cervical mediastinoscopy are very rare, such as contraindications for GA, extreme kyphosis, and cutaneous trachostomy after laryngectomy. Superior vena cava syndrome, previous sternotomy, and a large goiter do not prevent mediastinoscopy as well as previous radiotherapy and mediastinoscopy. However, due to the fibrosis and adhesions, the intervention in the aforementioned conditions can be uh, much more challenging and is more time consuming. The clinical significance of uh, mediastinoscopy. The current American and European guidelines for preoperative mediastinal nodal staging for non-small cell lung cancer are in agreement in obtaining the highest certainty level before lung resection. For this reason, their recommendation is to get tissue confirmation of regional nodal spread in all cases except in those patients with a small three centimeters or less peripheral carcinomas with no evidence of nodal involvement on CT and PET scan. <clears throat> Tissue confirmation can be performed with endoscopic or surgical techniques. When both modalities are available, it is recommended to start with the endobronchial ultrasonographic fine needle aspiration or with esophageal ultrasonographic FNA, or with their combination. Nevertheless, their negative results should be validated with a mediastinoscopy technique that still remains the gold standard for pre-resection mediastinal assessment, being 100% specific and 90% sensitive. What are the types of mediastinoscopy? We may hear some terms such as conventional rigid mediastinoscopy without a camera or the video assisted mediastinoscopy when camera, when a video camera is added, cervical mediastinoscopy and extended cervical mediastinoscopy, repeat or redo mediastinoscopy, the transthoracic mediastinoscopy, or actually the chamber raised procedure, or anterior mediastinotomy, and finally, between two brackets, uh, uh, medical mediastinoscopy, which is actually a, a combination of esophageal, esophageal uh, ultrasonographic FNA and endobronchial uh, ultrasonographic transbronchial needle aspiration. The operation room setup for conventional mediastinoscopy, the uh, operating table in the middle, the surgeon stands at the head of the patient, the anesthesia machine and the light source uh, are on the left side, the instrument uh, table and the scrub nurse on the right side. So uh, a support is placed under the patient's shoulders and the neck is extended. The endotracheal tube is positioned at the left corner of the mouth with the anesthesia machine at the patient's left side. This is a picture of the conventional uh, rigid mediastinoscope. And uh, these are the instruments uh, uh, re required for the video assisted mediastinos cervical mediastinoscopy. This is the uh, conventional mediastinoscope with a telescope attached to a video camera, a light cable, a number of uh, accessories like uh, biopsy forceps, suction channels, uh, and, and insulated uh, forceps. Some uh, surgical instruments are needed to create the incision, like the uh, scalpel 
uh, uh, forceps, uh, scissors, a needle holder, uh, a retractor, okay? And these are the forceps uh, and suction uh, channel, a number of vials to uh, position the uh, biopsy specimens. So a three centimeter transverse uh, cervical incision is made one finger breadth above the suprasternal notch. We have to understand the anatomy of the region, the strap muscles, uh, the thyroid gland and thyroid isthmus, uh, and the major vessels uh, and then and nerves. So uh, sharp dissection exposes the pretracheal muscles, which are separated vertically in the midline to expose the anterior surface of the trachea. The pretracheal fascia is incised. The, thing, the surgeon's uh, middle finger is advanced along the pretracheal plane and blunt dissection is carried out along the anterior surface. The mediastinum is carefully palpated for the presence of nodal enlargement. The finger is withdrawn and the mediastinoscope is advanced in the created plane. So this picture is obtained uh, through the video assisted mediastinoscopy. The plane in the front of the mediastinoscope uh, is developed with the use of blunt dissection using a metal sucker through the channel of the mediastinoscope. And to avoid and to handle major complications, it is important to visualize the anatomical uh, landmarks such as the uh, azygous uh, vein, the right pulmonary artery, and the first branch of the right pulmonary artery, uh, the right and left uh, main stem uh, bronchi and the, rec and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So here, this is the uh, aerial picture of the right pulmonary artery and the uh, right main bronchus. And here we can see the uh, tip of the uh, uh, mediastinoscope uh, a bit compressing the innominate artery. And these are the lymph nodes in the subcarinal region. The left recurrent laryngeal nerve lies approximately one centimeter lateral to the trachea and can usually be visualized in the mid tracheal plane. Sub, uh, uh, sequentially, the paratracheal uh, tissues are entered to expose the lymph nodes at the various stations. And prior to taking lymph node biopsy, if in doubt, use a long aspiration needle attached to a syringe and apply suction to exclude the possibility of being a vascular structure and not a lymph node. So here we can see the uh, major vessels, the azygous beam, the right pulmonary artery, the first branch of the right pulmonary artery. And here we can see the uh, subcarinal lymph nodes, uh, which may look like a vessel, okay? The standard is to take a biopsy of subcarinal lymph nodes, two epsilateral and one contralateral paratracheal lymph nodes. So if the lesion is on the right side, we take uh, a biopsy of the subcarinal lymph nodes, number seven, and the epsilateral uh, paratracheal lymph nodes 2R and uh, uh, 4R, and one contralateral uh, like the 4L. The biopsies are stored in separate vials, labeled with adhesive labels, and sent for histopathological examination. And when biopsies are taken from the different nodal stations, the biopsy forceps is cleaned each time to prevent contamination and uh, false positive results. 
one of the problems that may happen uh, during the procedure is the bleeding. So what to do for intraoperative bleeding? Small bleedings from biopsy sites can be electrocoagulated. When a major bleeding occurs, packing is the first thing to do. In case of uncontrollable hemorrhage, the decision is to use either thoracotomy or sternotomy. Right thoracotomy might be indicated when the bleeding is from the first branch of the right pulmonary artery or from the azygous vein. In all other cases, the sternotomy offers the best chances to control the bleeding. Closure of the incision. The strap muscles are approximated with one suture. The drainage of the mediastinal bed is usually not required. A subcutaneous uh, interrupted suture will obliterate the dead space. The skin is closed according to the surgeon's preferences. Morbidity and mortality. Cervical mediastinoscopy is a low risk procedure, but the potential for catastrophic complications is apparent. Unless additional or more extensive procedures are done under the same GA and the patient's condition permits, the procedure can be performed as an outpatient procedure. In experienced hands, cervical mediastinoscopy has no mortality and minimal morbidity. D. Lean and Lerot in 2005 published a paper in which over uh, 4,000 cervical mediastinoscopies were performed in a 20 year period in their center. There was no hospital mortality. Major bleeding requiring immediate intervention occurred in four patients. Entry to the esophagus was seen in one, in one patient, and injury to the bronchus was seen also in one patient, and both uh, cases were managed conservatively. What about the extended cervical mediastinoscopy? Left upper lobe tumors may metastasize to the subaortic lymph node station five and the paraortic node station six. As we said, these nodes cannot be biopsied through the routine cervical mediastinoscopy. Ginsberg and Associates described a technique to explore these stations five and six through the cervical incision. This technique is an alternative for the anterior second interspace mediastinotomy, which is more commonly used for exploration of these nodal stations. The advantage of the extended mediastinoscopy is the saving of an additional incision. So an extended cervical mediastinoscopy, uh, uh, the a plane of the uh, dissection is made in front of the aortic arch and the uh, mediastinoscope is advanced a bit lower to the uh, aortopulmonary uh, lymph nodes if the standard cervical mediastinoscopy was negative. <clears throat> and biopsies of lymph nodes in the aortopulmonary window are taken. So uh, this is the mediastinoscope uh, advanced uh, uh, over the aortic arch down to the lymph nodes in the aortopulmonary window. In experienced hands, the procedure has a high accuracy and minimal morbidity. It's important to state that this procedure is far less easy and therefore is less routinely performed compared with the conventional mediastinoscopy. What about repeat mediastinoscopy? This procedure is done for restaging of mediastinal lymph nodes after induction chemotherapy. And induction chemotherapy is given to patients with N2 disease in order to achieve 
downstaging of the tumor. Precise restaging of the mediastinum is important. And uh, although PET scan has a high accuracy in the primary staging of the mediastinum, it is less accurate uh, in restaging of the mediastinum after induction uh, therapy. Therefore, thoracic surgeons will be faced more and more frequently with the need to repeat mediastinoscopy. Now, the technique uh, of repeat mediastinoscopy is a bit different from the uh, procedure, from the primary procedure. If we imagine the uh, postural trachea, in the uh, 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 initial procedure, the plane of dissection is made in the front of the trachea. But in the repeat mediastinoscopy, the dissection is made to the left side of the trachea, which is not involved in the initial dissection and therefore less fibrous. So here, uh, a left uh, paratracheal tunnel is created, uh, whose, whose medial border is a trachea, and the surface is part of the oesophagus, and the space and the scope is inserted. Now, at the end of the lecture, we will demonstrate two cases, uh, one of uh, uh, video-assisted mediastinoscopy, and the other is of anterior mediastinotomy. The first case was an elderly man with uh, enlarged uh, mediastinal lymph nodes, uh, enlarged uh, right paratracheal lymph nodes, enlarged auto pulmonary window lymph nodes, and enlarged subcranial uh, sub lymph nodes. Uh, rigid uh, video mediastinoscopy was done under GA. Needle aspiration of the right uh, paratracheal lymph nodes revealed a caseous material consistent with TV, and multiple biopsies were obtained. So this is a picture of the uh, uh, mediastinoscope uh, in a place attached to a video camera. And these pictures are obtained through the uh, video mediastinoscope. And this is the caseous material of the right paratracheal lymph node. Confirmation uh, uh, of the diagnosis was made by a needle aspiration prior to taking a biopsy of the diseased lymph nodes. The second case was a man of 30 presented with shortness of breath, chest pain, and cough for a few months. Neck veins were distended, but there was no cervical lymph adenopathy. Uh, chest X-ray revealed a greatly widened mediastinum with a smooth lobulated outline. The lateral view revealed anterior mediastinal mass. Fiber optic bronchoscopy revealed a mucosal arrhythmia. Percutaneous transthoracic FNA and cytology was inconclusive. CT scan of the mediastinum revealed an anterior mediastinal mass located mainly on the, to the right side. Therefore, a right anterior mediastinotomy was performed. Two segments of ribs were resected, and a biopsy of the mass was obtained. The diagnosis was a large cell lymphoma, which responded, fortunately, very, very well to chemotherapy. What about medical mediastinoscopy? Transesophageal endoscopic ultrasound uh, scanning is a new minimal invasive method that provides high resolution imaging of the mediastinum using high frequency ultrasound probes attached to the tip of a flexible endoscope and efforts in addition to the facility of fine needle uh, aspiration or through cut biopsy under real time ultrasound guidance. So the uh, Esophageal ultrasonographic FNA is safe, can be done on an outpatient basis, is well tolerated, 
and provides an excellent diagnostic yield, being specific in 100% and sensitive in more than 90% of cases. A recent publication has documented that uh, esophageal ultra, uh, ultrasonographic FNA and endobronchial ultrasonographic transbronchial middle aspiration are 100% sensitive and specific in the staging of the mediastinum when used together. It seems therefore logical to assume that the combination of the two procedures will replace more invasive methods such as mediastinoscopy for diagnosis and the staging of lung cancers in the near future. However, mediastinoscopy is at present is still regarded as the gold standard in the region of the anterior mediastinum. And this is the list of the bibliography of our lecture. The take home messages. The primary role of mediastinoscopy lies in the evaluation of paratracheal and subcarinal adenopathy, anterior mediastinos mediastinotomy, the Chamberlain procedure offers access to the aortic window and the anterior mediastinum. The forgotten compartment in the body is no longer forgotten with the availability of many efficient and safe diagnostic techniques, such as conventional cervical and video assisted mediastinoscopy and the extended cervical mediastinoscopy, which can be done routinely with high level of safety and minimum morbidity and mortality in experienced hands. And with this beautiful picture of the city of Duhok in the region of Kurdistan, Iraq, I conclude my lecture. Thank you for watching and listening. This is Professor Abdesalam Yassin Taha signing off from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani.